Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about the graphic novel of The Evil Dead. So I came across this one quite by chance in the bookshop in the mall where I work. When I saw it, I knew I had to get it. I am a massive fan of the movies and to a certain extent the TV show as well, but not as much. I need to get back on that. But when I first saw this, I knew what I was going to get myself into and I knew exactly what it was as it's pretty much a slightly watered down version of the first movie. So this is a hardback and as you can probably read from the top this is the 40th anniversary edition and the writer of this is a man called Mark Ver Hendon. I probably said that completely wrong so I'll have it up on the screen somewhere and the artist is actually called John Bolton and the artwork in this is absolutely great it kind of looks like um, stills from the movie and then digitally altered to make it a bit more arty farty and all that type of stuff but I'll get to that later on during this video I'm pretty sure this has four chapters or four separate individual parts for them and at the end it actually has a foreword by the writer himself. And this is the afterwards for this edition. And plus he actually included the original afterwards from the original um, publication of this graphic novel. Because when I was on Amazon I looked at the paperback and it is a bit more expensive than the hardback edition. And I'm pretty sure by what I read from the afterword is that he wanted to have this a bit more easily accessible because of the art, um, because of the artwork and the amount of time and effort they decided to put into doing this. And at the end, it actually has um, John Bolton's sketch pad or sketch of the dead, and uh, this just has some of his ideas and drawings. <clears throat> Some of his layouts for the um, chapter covers, which don't really deviate that much from what they actually look like. Some storyboard concept drawings, which are very crude, but I suppose that's what they have to do. So yeah, that's included as well. And I'm just presuming that this is all bonus material for this 40th anniversary edition. So for this video, as always, this is going to be my own thoughts and feelings, not just regarding the graphic novel of The Evil Dead, but the movie as you know, as well. There'll be a kind of a comparison, well, sort of anyway. And as always, this is really going to be a sort of a spoiler-free video, but I'll try to steer away from major spoilers, but I might mention minor spoilers. But nothing that will overly spoil the enjoyment of the original movie if you haven't seen it already. So before I go through the story, the artwork in this is so great, it is so beautiful, but it is extremely graphic and gory. It doesn't really have any sexual um, things in it, but it does actually have scenes where some of the female characters have maybe a low cut top and it's kind of on the verge of showing some flesh or whatever, but nothing that goes completely overboard and over the top. But if you are squeamish about any gore or any violence or any blood or anything like that, because red is the, uh, you know, it's this artist's favorite color, I think, then you will probably not like this. But if you have watched the movie, then you more or less know what you're getting yourself in for. This doesn't really, as I said, deviate that much from the movie, but it does actually include other bonus material which I'll mention after I've showed you all these beautiful pictures. They are so, so detailed, so, I mean, look at that. I mean, I don't know if I can show this, but I'll show it anyway. I mean, look at that. See, I told you that red's probably John Bolton's favourite colour. But yeah, this is so, so good. It really is. I mean, look at that. It is so beautiful. This is so, so gorgeous. So... The story focuses around the movie, but I'll try to do this video for someone that maybe hasn't watched a movie and doesn't know what 
the Evil Dead is all about. Just a heads up guys, it is so fantastic. It is such a masterpiece of a movie that is a tribute to basically anyone can pick up a camera, um, go and film a movie with some of their friends and not spend a ridiculous amount of money on it, but create something that's really, really fantastic and batshit insane. So the graphic novel focuses around Ash, Scotty and their two girlfriends and one other friend as well, that they go to this secluded cabin in the woods to basically hang out, maybe drink some beers and do some other nighttime activities apart from sleeping. So as the story progresses, they discover that they aren't alone in this wooded area. There's nothing around, they are completely cut off from the rest of the world. And they discover that there's this entity living in the woods and they do not know what exactly it is but what they do know is that it wants to hurt them and kill them and quite possibly torment them and in the process drive them insane. And these creatures are brought to existence when Ash and Scotty find this mysterious book in the basement of this shack or this cabin and with it they find this strange dagger which is pretty much the same thing as the one in the movie and also they find a tape recorder where this man had all these experiments and he recited this incantation on the tape and this, inc and this incantation re uh, resurrected and brought back these demons called the Deadites. Now the Deadites, the closest thing they resemble are zombies, but they are quicker, they can morph and change their appearance at will uh, from either a monster form or from a monster to a human to try to mess with their victims. It's never really fully explained about where they came from, but hell is the closest location that they think these deadites are from. If you have watched the movie, uh, this doesn't really give you much answers about or any backstory about the deadites and who they are or the Book of the Dead or anything like that. So you aren't really gonna get any extra bonus material or any backstory regarding the, the deadites themselves. So Ash and his friends are picked off one by one as is what the norm is in any horror movie from the 80s or 90s or, or whatever. And The Evil Dead was a movie that surprised me because unlike a traditional horror movie where all the characters get picked off one by one and the last survivor is usually a female, this is probably done because it creates some sort of connection for the viewer and the character. It makes the viewer want to root for the victim and the last survivor and wants them to be okay and wants them to escape this tragic event that's happening in their lives. But Evil Dead said, no, we're not having that. Um, the females were the first people to die in Evil Dead and Ash was the last survivor. And this only revolves around the first movie. So, just a heads up guys, Ash does have both hands. He doesn't have his chainsaw hands and he doesn't have his boomstick. He does actually use a shotgun, which he finds in the cabin, as well as axes, a railroad tie, and anything and every, everything and anything and everything that he can find to defend himself. So please do not go into this thinking that he has a chainsaw hand and all that stuff. This more or less focuses on the first movie and doesn't even touch on the second movie. And yes, I know that there is probably someone in the comments that's gonna say, well, David, the second movie more or less had, more or less covered everything from the first movie in its opening scene. And yeah, yeah, I know, but that's only about a 10 or 20 minute intro. This only focuses on the first movie itself. 
The writers of this book give me the impression that they didn't want to simply do a copy and paste of the movie in graphic novel form because they thought it would be predictable as well as boring as well. So they decided to expand on the characters and some scenes that came up in the movie that weren't fully explained like how Scotty went out into the woods and what happened to him when he was out there and when he came back and he was all injured we never really found out about what actually happened to him outside in the woods in the movie but this explains about what actually happened to him and plus we do get some little fragments of flashbacks or memories or whatever you want to call them about the friends when they were in a academic or social environment and how they were like talking as friends and all that type of stuff it didn't really add anything extra for me personally as a fan of this movie or this series i think the main point and aim was to maybe create some stronger connection between the reader and the characters and make you care about them more. I mean, as I said, it's only very, very briefly, it's only on one or two pages long, so it doesn't overstay its welcome, but it, it, was, it wasn't that needed, it really wasn't. All we needed was some deadites and Ash basically shooting them and killing them, and dismembering them and all that type of stuff. All the characters in this die exactly how they do in the movie and in the same order that they do as well there isn't really any surprises if you've seen the movie this is only for fans of the movie so if you haven't watched the movie you can read this and watch the movie as well but i would recommend that you watch the movie and then if you want to pick this up and give it a go and all the characters are fine they acted exactly how they did in the movie and I suppose Scott or Scotty was a bit more braver in the graphic novel than he was in the movie but that really never took me out of the story and our main man Ash uh, played fantastically by Bruce Campbell more or less his character was kind of on the verge between the first movie and the second movie but it was fine he had like um give me uh, give me some sugar and all that type of iconic lines so that's really all i have to say guys i didn't really know about how this video was going to go i didn't know how long it's going to go on for Ho hopefully not too long so i'm going to rate this a four stars out of five and in, and in conclusion it was a very entertaining read i read this all in one day when i was dog sitting jake as he makes all these weird noises and i uh wanted something a bit more easier to read but it was really enjoyable i would love if these guys did two more graphic novels for the second and third movie that would make it like a nice trilogy but um yeah that's just my opinion i would love if they continued doing these type of things and maybe if they wanted to they could do some spin-off movies for Ash versus the Evil Dead as well. But yeah, if you've seen the movie and you're a massive fan of the movie and or Bruce Campbell, I would highly recommend that you read this. This was a fun book that didn't bring a lot to the Evil Dead mythos, but it was a very fun and enjoyable read. That was a very quick thing to actually read. So with all that said and done, have a great day. Read some awesome books and I will see you all in my next video.